register that we track that. Yeah. All right. I'd just like to say uh, for the record, uh, Olivia, a great job. And, uh, you know, it was fun going down to the, uh, uh, to the House and the Senate with you. Uh, I don't want your job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again for coming down for me today. Thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> to we'll now um, have the public forum over the public forum for the second reading of the ordinance. Uh, Mr. Playfair and then we'll have comments from the general manager. Ordinance number 309, an ordinance of the Tri-County Metropolitan Transportation District Board in Trimet, adopting adjustments to Fairway Square, establishing an honor citizen Fairway Square Pass program, and amending Trimet Code Chapter 19. Thank you, Mr. President, board members. Um, the, the issue that's really brought forward by this ordinance, uh, the ordinance itself, explicitly addresses the issues around Fairless Square. I'm just going to be able to repeat some of which you have already had presented in, um, and obviously there is an uh, interest in public comment as well here. Uh, specifically, um, as we look at uh, uh, Fairless Square, how it has operated historically, and certainly uh, what the pattern of use has been in Fairless Square, uh, we see that the heaviest use by far, in a way, uh, has been on the alignment that comes from the White Center on over the Steel Bridge um, into uh, downtown Portland. Um, and then along the existing light rail uh, that had occurred on both the uh, uh, Front Avenue and as well as on Gambill and Morrison. Um, equally heavy, however, has been the, the uh, use along the transit mall itself. Uh, on 5th and 6th Avenues, um, by far the vast majority of trips uh, are originating uh, and debarking uh, through that uh, area. As a result, the opening of the Green Line come September 12th really opens the possibility, uh, from our perspective, of, uh, of being able to have a uh, perilous uh, ability to ride um, on light rail, and that uh, ability really is to be able to uh, back down a little bit there, thanks. Um, the, uh, what it does is it allows for the ability to be able to have people who are utilizing Fairless um, still be able to get to their destinations on white rail. And that is uh, um, obviously very, very important. Uh, the issue uh, for us in this issue, in this area, um, is really, uh, in my view, the principal problem that faces our bus operators. They are expected as people or during uh, and utilizing fareless, indicating that they are riding for fareless purposes uh, within the fareless boundary. Uh, bus operator, crowded bus needs to remember is that that person that's in the back seat in the corner, uh, did they say fareless? And by the way, we're coming up the boundary of fareless. Uh, it really puts our operators into an impossible situation. Um, as a result, we think that uh, by being able to restrict it to the rail, um, that we're able to provide the benefits that were and have always been intended as a part of Fairless, uh, but to be able to do it in a way that um, really makes our operations uh, and our operators uh, work more effectively. One of the issues that was introduced during this time was a concern about what about uh, uh, people who are living within Fairless um, and uh, are elderly and disabled, uh, may, uh, and just uh, uh, are subject are eligible for honored citizen. Is there a way for them to be able to uh, make use of the bus lines? Uh, this is particularly notable in the southern part of the uh, Fairless area uh, because of the of the location of the Safeway store up at uh, 11th uh, uh, in the Jefferson and Columbia uh, route area. Um, we believe that that. Uh, Concern had merit, and uh, that is why this ordinance also allows for the establishment of a um, honored citizen bus fare uh, that would be a very nominal cost, but with photo, photo ID, would be allowing people to be able to make use um, if they are living within the fareless boundary to be able to have that pass allow them to be able to make use of buses also within the fareless area. Uh, not as a part of the specific ordinance, but I do want to be able to stress that as we went to public comment and public hearing, uh, we were addressing budget issues and implicit within this 
um, are changes that we are uh, making. We have told you before about those. Uh, they do not require your formal action, but we also want you to be uh, well aware of exactly what is happening. That is, uh, we make adjustments on our frequent service bus lines. Uh, they are small adjustments, generally two to three minutes during midday or on week, uh, uh, weekends. Uh, but um, because those lines are so heavily uh, used and have so many vehicles on them, even those two to three minutes in the core area, maybe a maximum of four minutes on the outlying areas of those lines, um, we were able to uh, achieve uh, reductions in uh, expenditures that really now bring into balance our budget. And as I say, although it is not a part of the ordinance, uh, uh, but they were being discussed uh, before the public at both open houses and at public hearing, um, we think those changes uh, uh, are uh, important or appropriate. Um, though I do say also, and when you get to the transit investment plan later on on your uh, on your agenda, you will see that we uh, believe that when uh, the economy recovers, those frequent service lines are ones that need to be able to be restored very quickly, as quickly as possible, because they really are our workforces. Again, as I say, that's a separate item from the ordinance itself. It's not affected by the ordinance, but I wanted to make sure you were aware because this was a part of the broader discussion with the public during both open houses and public hearings. With that, um, you have a number of people who would like to comment. I'd be happy to answer any questions either now or after that public comment. Okay, uh, why don't we take the public comment appointment. Uh, Jean Roy. I'd like to ask uh, each of the people who have asked to uh, comment, please limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you.